Hello and welcome to the second background extraction tutorial. In the last tutorial, if you remember, we used the extraction tool to extract the subject from the background. This time we're going to carry on from there and we're going to have a look at some interesting ways of making the subject blend in with the background a little bit better. So, as usual, the very first thing that we do is we take a copy of our background layer. There we have it. And I'm going to use the Extract tool on this background layer to extract the background, just as we did before. Extract. With the Extract window, I'm going to draw a line, highlight a line around the subject, like so. We fill it and then we extract it. And there we have our extracted image. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a black and white transparency mask out of this extracted image. We're then going to apply this transparency mask onto a new background layer where we can adjust the mask and, and decide how much of the image we allow to pass through the mask or not. So first of all, we're going to take the copy of our background layer again. Just like so. And now we're going to select the, um, the extracted image. Now to do that, I press the control key on the keyboard or the command key on the Macintosh keyboard. And I click on top of the layer that contains the extracted image. And there you can see there's a perfect selection being made around what is the extracted image. So now I can turn off this uh, extracted image. So we're just looking at this layer here. And with this button down here, I can add a layer mask to the layer. I'll just click here. And there we have it. So what this has done is this has put a black and white mask based around the selection we just had on top of this background image here. So the only part of the image that gets through is the, the part that coincides with the white part of the mask. The black part of the mask doesn't let the image through. Let me just show you that by clicking the Alt key and clicking on the mask itself. That way we can see the mask itself. So the white is where the image is allowed to pass through and the black is where it's masked out. So now we know how the mask is working, we can zoom in on the image and have a look at what parts of the image need to be changed. For example, the image is a bit raggy around here, you see. There's a little bit of the image that's been eaten away there. So I can get a small brush, I get a small hard brush, five pixel brush should do it nicely. Now if I select the mask, make sure I've got the mask selected and not the image. Select the mask there. And if I paint in white, then I will be extending the, the mask, extending the background, the visible area. So I can fill in this area here. And of course, if I go too far, then I get the background. This is a, you see? So now with the painting on black, I can virtually erase what I don't need. Just go down there. There we are. Filling in the area like that. Now this is manually extending, manually adjusting the mask itself. And there we have it. The edge is touched up by extending and contracting the mask itself, editing the mask layer and not the image layer. Now to be able to see this, uh, what I'm working on a little bit better, I'm going to add a temporary background to this image. So I'm going to create a new layer 
and I'm going to put this new layer underneath the image. I'm going to press Control A, which is Select All. I can also find it here, Select All. Um, and working on this layer below, I'm going to press Shift and Backspace, which is the Fill dialog. And I'm going to fill this with a, a neutral green colour, which is actually my background colour at the moment. So, fill it with a background colour. OK, now I have a green. This is just so I've got to, so I can see what I'm working with. Now another thing that we can do with the uh, ed working on the mask is to use the levels on the mask itself. So I'll go in and I'll select the mask. In fact, we'll have a look at what we're doing. I'll press Alt and I'll look at the mask itself. We'll zoom in here. Now I'll bring up the levels dialog, which is uh, here levels you can also get it by pressing control l you see and uh, as i move the faders here you'll be able to see what it's actually doing to the mask it sort of gives it more definition in effect it's the trapping of the mask it brings it in and out I'll just show you that again on the actual image itself. I won't apply that. We'll now click on the image, look at the image itself. Uh, make sure the mask is selected. Bring up the levels dialog. Moving the sliders here makes the edge of the mask sharper. That's too much. Yeah, about there. Press OK. Well, that's good, that's a, a, a good improvement. Okay, so that's another thing we can do with the mask itself. And finally, one more thing that I'm going to show you today that we can do with the mask, um, and that is to blur the edge of the mask. Quite simple but effective technique. Zoom in a little bit so you can see. And if, we, if you remember, at the edge, the back here, it was a little bit sharp and unsightly and natural there. So once again I'll go into the mask just to see what I'm doing. That's the bit that looks sharp on the image. So I'll just select my blur tool with a fairly large brush. That's quite large enough I think, 39 in this case. Uh, strength, well you can vary this a lot. Uh, we'll start off with a 75% blur. and just blur the edge of the mask there. Now this is far too much, I can tell. Uh, and when we go back to that image, we can see how that's blurred in. I'll just undo that by pressing Control Z, and you can see the difference there. So this blur strength setting here is a little bit too much for what I need at the moment. I'll take it down to 50 where it was before. And there, making sure the mask is selected, because I don't want to blur the image itself. And just there, blurring on the edge of the mask. And I'll just go around and blur the parts of the mask that need blurring in. I always have to make sure that I've got the mask set, because if I have the image selected, I'm actually blurring the image itself, which isn't what we want. Okay, so this way I am just working on the mask itself. So as usual, the last step is to insert a, uh, a novel background for this little fellow. And I think I've got one here that I prepared earlier. And that background seems to fit in quite nicely with the image. Well, thank you for joining us in this tutorial. I hope you got something out of it. If you'd like to pay a visit to our website at uh, photographybook.net, that's www.photographybook.net, one word, then uh, there are a few more tutorials, and there's our ever-increasing blog, which is uh, full of useful information on digital photography in general. That's photographybook.net. Okay, thank you for joining us, and until next time.